you know, normally I can't wait to get stuck into a new project. I, I get really excited when I've got something that come in that's broken and I get to have a look at it and see if I can fix it. And, and sometimes I can even fix it. But this, oh, I've been putting this off for a while. This, oh God, I bought this months and months ago. And I did do a video on it when I first got it. And it was sold to me as not working. And I, when I plugged it in, I think, I think I can hear some high voltage on the screen. But apart from that, it was dead. It was doing absolutely nothing, no response. And I'd like to have it working, but I've been I've been putting it off mainly because it involves tinkering with a CRT. But I think I think now is the time I pluck up the courage. I stop looking at it and thinking, oh, I should be getting on with that. Just stop procrastinating altogether and just crack on with it. So in this video, I'm going to have a look inside and see if we can ascertain what's gone wrong with it and if it's repairable and if I'm able to repair it. Yeah, let's give it a go. So, how do we get into this thing? I've got a screw there. What else have we got? We've got two screws at the top. I've got two screws here and another screw at the side. So let's buzz those out and see what moves. I've been putting it off. I'm putting it off, but today... I wouldn't say today's the day I sort it, but today's the day I start to have a look at it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, look at this way. If you're watching this video, it means I, I survived to edit it, so I probably didn't kill myself using the CRT. But yeah. Oh, I know there's a screw in there, just uh, help I've got it in the shot as well. The thing's huge and the room I'm working in is tiny, so trying to get things in shot is a little bit difficult. I think that's out. Next one. loose. Now is that everything I need to slide this back case off? I can't tell if that's still stuck or... Oh no, something's moving. Uh, it feels like something's still got it. Hang on. Yeah, there's a little expansion cover here actually. Let's try buzzing that out. goes okay as screws go flying but we're in well I've said this on other videos before and I want to keep saying it again CRTs they are incredibly dangerous things and they can hold a potentially lethal charge after they've been switched off unplugged whatever so if you're not happy working on these things, then please don't. Honestly, you're better off having a broken retro computer than losing your life. And I don't think I am being too dramatic by saying that. You can certainly do yourself a very, very nasty injury if you, you handle these things wrong. Because effectively what you've got here is a giant capacitor. Anyway, this thing hasn't been powered on for quite literally months. So I think the chances of this having any sort of charge in it are almost zero. But... You can never be 100% sure, so I've got a, um, a homemade discharge tool, so it's just a screwdriver um, attached to a flying lead. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to short out the CRT very, very carefully. I'm going to attach my one of the lead to the chassis. And then I'm going to get under this suction cup. Yeah, I think in hindsight a, a flat-headed screwdriver might have been a better idea, but that's not what I did, so yeah. Go on. Okay, there's nothing there. 
I think we're safe. That's pretty discharged. I'd have been very surprised if there'd been anything, but if it has been on recently, then you, yeah, you could expect to get a bit of a, a bit of a pop out of that. But in this case, no, we're fine. So, how the hell? I mean, that's the that's going to be the analog board, isn't it, for the display? And the computer itself presumably is that under there. So how the hell do I get in there? Can I unplug this board at the top and that'll give me access? Can I slide the other board out from underneath? Not sure. Let's take some screws out and see what moves. Well, for a kick off, this board at the top seems somewhat loose. In fact, there's, I can see two plastic clips and I can't see any screws at all that are actually holding that in place. So maybe that'll slide out. Maybe. I'd have to undo a few cables first. Maybe, yeah. Uh, let's think about this. Right. Because I don't. The, the less I can disconnect, the better. Frankly, if I pull that clip out. Oh, that's moving. And I get the one on the other side. Oh. Yeah, that whole board's sliding backwards, and that's free. Am I going to get away with... No, I'm going to have to disconnect that suction cup. Definitely. This multi-plug's going to have to go. Assuming that is a plug. Looks like one. I'm going to save you an awful lot of bad language, really, really bad language. But yeah, what I've ended up having to do just to get to the computer itself is to separate the case again and unplug a load more multi plugs. But yeah, I think I can actually access the actual computer, the actual bit that I wanted to look at now. So I'm assuming I can just unscrew this from the case and that'll pop right out. Um, if I can find the anchor points, there's one. There's another one. Let's just buzz those out. See why people don't bother repairing these. It's horrendous. I'm already sick of it and I don't I've not even got to the computer yet. There. That's done. That's out. Let me just put these screws back in so they don't go AWOL. Because you just know I'm not going to be able to find anything here if I don't put these back in properly. Right. So, computer main board presumably is in there, which is all I was trying to get to in the first place. God forbid they have a little tray where you could just slide this out, you know. Yikes. So I've got an RF shield. I presume that's what it is. Now to me this is screaming of a power problem. If it's doing nothing but then, I mean who, who really knows where the hell did that go? Oh yeah. So 
Thank God for that. Right, we're in. Well, we're in, and there really isn't much to it, is there? So, what have we got? I didn't see anything obvious at first that might have failed, and then I found, I'll try and point to it, um, this little capacitor here. I don't know if you're going to see it on the camera, it's probably not going to focus great, but that has dropped its guts all over the board. That has absolutely failed. So that could be part of the problem. Who knows? I think the safest thing to do, considering what an absolute pain in the neck it is to get inside this board, is change all the capacitors, and then I'll put it back together, and we'll uh, we'll take it from there. You see, the thing is, I don't have a lot of money in this computer, and I don't really intend to put a lot in either. So, unless the problem is fairly simple, well, it's going to be a parts machine, unfortunately. But yeah, what a what a simple thing it is. I mean, there's a couple of custom Amstrad trip chips. There's a uh, there's a Z80 processor. Some RAM there. There's some expansion slots if you want to upgrade the RAM, which is something I will not be doing, or at least not in the short term. Yeah, it's a tiny, tiny little board. I was uh, I was expecting more, but yeah. So what I'll do, I'll swap out all these capacitors and then we'll get it back into the, the case and we'll move forward from there. Right, new caps are in. There was only three of them, so it didn't exactly take long. Uh, I'll put this back in the case then, I suppose. And that's the shield reinstalled and it's back in its little tray. So that can then go back onto the main unit, but I'm not going to do that because I want to have a look at the disk drive while I've got the thing apart. And I wouldn't normally bother until I know the computer's actually going to work. But because it's such a pain in the arse to get to, I thought, well, I might as well take the disk drive out now, see if it needs a new belt, clean the heads on it, that sort of thing. And do you know what? Even if the computer doesn't work, well, I've got a spare service disk drive then, haven't I, I suppose. So I'll take it out now while it's actually accessible and have a look. Let's give it the once over. So I don't think... It's going to take that much to remove. Now I've got it to this point. It should just be a couple of screws. And, ta-da, we're out. Okay, don't know if there's anything special about this drive, but I doubt it. So let's get it out of the holder and uh, let's have a look at it. Oh, it's another tight screw. It's probably never been serviced before, I don't know how much use it's had. But then, this whole thing could be an exercise in time wasting because I could do all this and I might never get that computer working. I don't know at this point. I just know that that disk drive is an absolute pig to get to. And if I don't service it now, you just know it's going to have a fault, don't you? So, let's do it now. Okay, so will that slide forwards, presumably? Really doesn't want to come out, why? Can't see what's holding it in. Oh no, there it goes. Apparently it's the way you hold your mouth. I'm hoping it's just a direct drive unit and there's no belt to change, because if it does have one, then it's probably perished. Let me just get in a bit closer, so we can get a better angle on it. Okay, so top cover off, presumably. I've got two screws there, I'll just buzz those out. Now will this just lift? Too much. Come on. Come on. I 
tracker. There we go. And yeah, I think there's going to be a belt. There's a motor there. Spindle there, another motor there. Yeah, I can even see the belt. It looks to be in one piece actually, but. I bet it's not working as it should. How do I change that? Do I need to go in through the top? Huh. Let me just pause this camera for a second. I just need to get in close and see what I can uh, see what I can figure out. No, nope, stuff it. I think if I play about with that too much, I'm going to knock it out of alignment. So you know what? If it doesn't work, I've got plenty of other floppy drives I can put in. It's just not worth the faffing about. Um, to be honest, if the computer does work, I'd be tempted to put a GoTech in it anyway. So yeah, do you know what? Scrap that. That was a bad idea. Um, maybe. If it's faulty in another video I'll pull it out we'll have a proper teardown of it but right here right now I I could be wasting an awful lot of time on a computer that's not even gonna work so let's just let's just park that for one minute yeah stuff it Do you know what if the computer works and that is a big if then I'll worry about the disk drive at a later point to be honest the the belt didn't feel great so if this thing does work then I think that will be an issue but Right here, right now. Let's just see if the thing works, shall we? So, the board's back in. And just for giggles, I did test the capacitors that came off it. And two of them were fine. They were perfectly within spec. One of them, the one that was showing all the signs of leakage, yeah, that, that's completely failed. It wasn't even registering as a capacitor. Um, me testing unit was just saying uh, unknown or broken part. So it wasn't even trying to do anything with it. So, yeah. Um, I can't guarantee that that was the only fault, but it was definitely a fault and we found one, so that's good, I suppose. It's better than finding nothing. Anyway, let's try and get this thing back together because, um, the less bits I've got floating around, the better. Let me just come around the other side. Try not to bump the camera. Like that. I believe lived in that. Just lift all the cabling out the way for now. Anyone remember how any of this went? I think I do. Yeah. Okay, uh, bear with me while I attempt to plug things back in. I'll bring you back and I've tidied it up a bit. Well, that's everything back in now, apart from the high voltage in the analog board. And on that note, I was looking at the capacitors in this, and they look okay apart from. There's one just, oh hang on, yeah, where my thumb is there, it's um, right next to the heat sink and it seems to have a little bit of a bulge in it. So maybe that's not doing so well either. So I might try changing that and testing it. And I might pop a few of the others out as well and change those. I've gone around and I've just dotted with a pen all the capacitors, all the electrolytics. So if I do ch go around, I have to change them all and I know what's what. Uh, there's 33 of them by the way, so hopefully I won't have to change them all, but um, I don't know, I don't know. Certainly that one, I'm going to pull that, I'm going to test it. I suppose I could pull them out and test them, and then put them back if they're okay. There's always that. But yeah, um, I won't refit this until I've changed at least this, possibly that, maybe a few of the others. I'll see what I've got in stock and what I need to order. How about that? 
Oh, well, it's a good week later, isn't it now? So, where was I up to? Yeah, I was going to pull off a capacitor on this board because it looked a bit bulgy. And when I pulled it off, you know when you're desoldering a rotten capacitor and you get that horrible fish smell and you know, you just know they've rotted. Yeah, I got that. So I've replaced this capacitor and then I ended up pulling a few more. Same problem. Long story short, I've recapped the entire board bar one or two capacitors. And I would say, I would say a good third of them were rotten and they were never going to work. Um, but yeah, there was, there was 33 of the buggers. So I've been, I've been quite busy. I've been taking me time. Then I've had to wash the board because it had all the electrolyte which had leaked underneath it as well. And it has done some damage, unfortunately. And I did have to repair a couple of traces underneath as well. So, yeah. Anyway, all the caps are changed. The board's been cleaned. I think I've got rid of all the electrolyte. So, I don't know. I think it's either going to work or it isn't, isn't it? Um, I'm going to get this board back in the chassis now. I'll bring you back when that's done. And then I suppose we can test it. And we'll see if we've, we've made an effective repair or not think that's everything hooked up as it should be i'm just going to do another little check and then it's the time well it's the scary bit i suppose plug it in and see what happens and i did say before what's the worst that can happen and i thought well the worst that can happen is it won't work but no the worst that can happen is it can explode and burn my house down but let's not think that way let's just uh, let's let's be positive i'll plug it in now and i want to give this i don't know 20 percent chance of working Considering the state of those caps and the, the state of the board. Who knows? Who knows? Ugh, scary bit. Don't think that's doing anything. Oh, well, I was hoping for more than that. Now this is interesting, a couple of cycles of the power switch, and it's doing something, it's just a white screen, but every now and then it's chirping at me as well. So the PC speaker's kicking in, um, the shift lock light is working, but I don't know what's going on with this white screen, so, mm, so there's still an issue, but I think... The analogue board must be working, if nothing else. So I don't know whether I need to make an adjustment, or there's still a fault, or what. I don't know, but I mean... So where it was, where it wasn't working at all, it was doing nothing. That's something, I suppose. Hmm. Don't know. Don't know. Yeah, me again. So I've been reading up on the forums, and it turns out this might actually be normal behaviour. So you do get the white screen until you put a boot disk in and load up the operating system. Apparently that's normal. Um, if you've got one of these and you know better, um, by all means correct me. But do you remember when I said I might have a problem with the disk drive? Well, if I put a disk in, now I don't have the correct operating system. I want to see if I can find an image for it. But if I put it in, you'll hear the disk is trying to load. So that's not going to work. So I am going to have to take it apart again at some point and replace the belt on the drive and then hopefully when I get the right oh, be quiet when I get the right disk image then in theory this should work so it might actually be a working machine and I just need to load up the operating system so it might actually be okay I don't know I'll um I'll see if I can get a disk image so the part two to this video is gonna be repairing that disk drive so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to change the belt on it. And getting a copy of the OS. If you've got one of these and you've got an image file of the operating system, um, I'm assuming it runs CPM, I'm not entirely sure. Please let me know, because you would be my best friend for a long, long time if, you, if you've got a copy of that. Um, yeah, I'm assuming rightly or wrongly, that this is actually a functioning computer at this point and it's doing what it should be doing, minus the faulty disk drive. So yeah, so that'll be my next job. But I think I'll cut it here for this video because I don't know when I'm going to get back around to it. But yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Um, if you've got any suggestions, let me know and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye.